Hi there, my name is uh, Chris and I'm uh, going to tell you a bit about my um, Hackintosh system uh, which I just set up recently and just wanted to share a bit of the um, learning I've had and also um, some of the pros and cons if you're looking at the difference between a, a Mac system and a Hackintosh system. So for those of you who, who don't know what this is, basically a Hackintosh is a way of getting um, a Mac operating system onto a PC. So um, Apple um, builds its own machines um, and sells uh, operating software which works on those machines specifically. In more recent years they've been using more standard PC parts which has meant that some clever people have managed to create a hack which allows you to run the operating system on a PC. So the benefits of this are that you can build your own specification machine to run the, the Mac operating system on. Now what attracted me to this was um, I've had an um, a long history of using Mac since uh, the mid 90s and I got used to using the operating system quite deeply but I'm um, not really a techie kind of person, not very familiar with PCs, how um, sort of BIOS works and that sort of stuff. Um, but I was getting a bit frustrated with the price of the Apple machines um, and the limited specifications you can get these days. Um, so I stumbled across the idea of a Hackintosh and um, looked into it and I was a bit concerned about building a machine from scratch having not done that before. Um, and wasn't sure that I was going to be able to um, do that without running into lots of problems. But then I um, came across this system called a NUC, N-U-C, or NUC, as I've heard it pronounced in uh, some videos. And basically it's a, an Intel um, kit, and they build this small um, PC, a bit like a Mac Mini kind of, kind of little box. Um, and everything's in there, you just need to install um, a, a hard drive and RAM and off you go. So if you're building a, a normal tower PC, tower PC system, you'd be putting everything in there, the motherboard, the RAM, the power supply, the fan, the whole lot. And so that's a bit daunting for me. I wasn't too keen on that. So this NUC system was great. So um, I shopped around, found it on Amazon uh, US and um, along with, you know, when I clicked on it and looked into it, I found one with uh, two hard drive slots, which was very appealing. Um, my prior setup was an iMac with um, uh, an external hard drive, so I had more stuff on my desk which I didn't really want. Um, but it's quite difficult to um, find a Mac these days that we can have internal more than one internal hard drive, so that was quite appealing. Here's my board. So I bought the NUC uh, from Amazon, and um, when I clicked on the thing, there was um, a recommended RAM and um, hard drive, so I just chose that, assuming that it would all work together quite happily. So I'll put this up on the screen what I got, but basically it's a NUC 6i5SYH, which has um, a slot for a SSD drive um, and a SATA drive. It's got Iris Graphics 540. It's 5.5 inches square, so it's quite small. A 1.8 gigahertz processor. It's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, four USB 3s, um, four size HDMI uh, and Ethernet and um, a camera card slot. Um, so with that I got a Samsung 850 EVO 250GB M2 SSD, so a, a solid state drive. And these come on small, um, almost like RAM chip like looking things. I hadn't seen those before so that was pretty interesting um, and that slots in. Um, and 16GB of Kingston DDR4 RAM. Um, so I think the difference between the 5i and the 6i, the 6i is a, a release this year, is that um, it's shifted from DDR3 to 4 and I hear that there's better RAM performance with DDR4. So that's what I got. Fairly, I suppose, middle of the range kind of specification. Quite a lot of RAM. Um, there you go, it was just cheap so I got it. Um, so the um, installation of the, the, um, the NUC itself is really easy. There's lots of um, uh, videos on YouTube showing you how to do it, but really um, if you've ever put RAM into a machine before you'd be quite happy to do this. Um, the RAM slotted in very simply. The SATA drive um, just slots in and pushes out. It couldn't be simpler. Um, I did have a bit of a fiddle with the SSD drive, the one that's on this sort of chip, because um, there's a tiny screw which stops it from popping out. Um, and that was quite fiddly to hold in place. Um, um, took me maybe you know three or four goes to, to get it in place. I think I ended up using a pair of tweezers to try and hold it in place. Um, but that was the only moment where there was some blue language uh, in the hardware um, setup, at least. 
Um, so the installation side, this is where things got really interesting and where I was a bit concerned. Like I said, I'm not a techie person. I don't do coding. I don't know anything about delving into um, the depths of systems. So I was a little nervous, but um, there's a website called Tony Mac X, I think it is, um, which has loads of guides and tutorials and forums um, to help people with the installation. And basically there's um, a really good link again, I'll, sh I'll put up on below. Um, which was a step-by-step -step walkthrough um, and it involves using some software called UniBeast and MultiBeast which are free downloads. Um, there's a little bit of tweaking of the BIOS to do which was really simple um, and um, basically it was a very straightforward thing to do. Um, my heart was in my mouth a little bit working through it obviously because um, I expected the you know things to go go wrong but it, it didn't. The, um, the main problem I had was a bit of a journey from beginning to end um, so the first time I tried it, I used an existing um, download I had of the Mac operating system. Um, and basically what Unibeast does is it creates a startup USB pen drive um, and copies across the um, Mac operating system. And that installs the software that's needed onto the NUC um, to trick it into accepting the Mac OS on top of it. And... Um, I managed to get that going and then going into installation and it would just stop installing and the screen would go blank. Um, so looking on the forums there was a reference to um, an HDMI driver um, thing that you may need to do so I was mucking about with that for ages um, to no avail. Um, and then I kind of gave up and I thought okay I'll stick Windows on it, it does at least I'll get the machine going. Maybe I can download the various bits and bobs to make everything work. Um, then I found, I had this old Windows 7 installation DVD, so I bought myself a second-hand DVD drive, um, plugged it in, CD started up, uh, wouldn't start, no, started up, um, but the keyboard wouldn't um, work, so I couldn't sort of scooch through all the different parts of the um, setup process with the keys, and the mouse wouldn't work. So I found out that the um, uh, Windows 7 installation DVD doesn't recognise USB 3 ports, so wouldn't recognise the keyboard and the mouse. So that's where more blue language ensued, I have to say. Um, so I went round to my sister-in-law's and downloaded the uh, Windows 8.1 USB installer on, onto a USB stick. That went OK, plugged it in, started up, went through the installation, um, and then I found that my product key was out of date because I got it through a charity thing a long time ago. Long story. Basically that um, didn't go anywhere, but it did show me that at least the uh, machine was, was working okay. And then I just had this inkling that maybe there was a problem with the um, Mac installation, um, uh, the download of the, um, the Mac installer. So I um, downloaded that afresh, um, went through the UniBeast installation again, uh, all from scratch, um, and lo and behold it worked. So that was the um, problem I found. So um, just a bit of advice there I guess is that um, when you build your USB stick, get the um, uh, you know, download afresh from um, the uh, Apple Store rather than using one you might have in your system tucked away somewhere like I did because it, it, it didn't work for some reason. Um, so once that was all um, in, installed, um, it was just like setting up any other Mac. Um, I did uh, a migration using my um, uh, What's the thing called? The other backup system, Time Machine, uh, and that worked pretty well. Um, performance. I'll give you a bit of a run through in a minute. Um, but basically, I've been very impressed with the performance of the um, the Mac, the Hackintosh. Um, it starts up in about 50 seconds um, from pushing the button through um, going through this Clover app, which is the um, the system which the operating system is on top of, and it automatically sort of runs through that, so don't to push any buttons, um, and in 50 seconds I'm able to launch an app and off we go. So that's pretty pretty fast. Um, the uh, application's responses is really fast. Um, things open really quickly. Um, so very happy with all of that, that's pretty good. The um, speed of copying between drives is really good. Um, between the two internal drives. Um, so I've been very happy with the general performance of it. Um, so um, in terms of a comparison of Macs, I've had a look and compared um, them to two models, um, which, is, which are close. Um, current models, one is the iMac 
uh, 1.6 gigahertz model which is the um, lowest range one currently this is uh, over July 2016 um, so if you bought that in New Zealand um, with 16 gigabytes and a 250 SSD you're looking at $2,700 um, obviously you get the screen uh, with that of course uh, you could get a mini which is a similar kind of box I guess uh, 1.4 gigahertz so a little bit slower processor than the NUC again if you put um, 16 gigs into that you're looking at $1,400 so the, the NUC system I bought was equivalent to 900 uh, New Zealand dollars. Um, of course I had to buy the, um, uh, a monitor. I think I spent a couple hundred, maybe 230 on that. Um, and I did uh, buy another um, SAT 2.5 inch drive, which was something like $70. But of course the, the iMac and the uh, Mini don't have that option, so I didn't include that. And also the Mac Mini, uh, don't, didn't see an option to upgrade that to an SSD, um, so I couldn't compare that. So you're not really, you know, um, comparing oranges with oranges, as it were. Um, but I spent probably twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars all up. Um, so compared to the um, the iMac, which would have cost me two thousand seven hundred, it's half price. Um, so for me, that's a real bonus. Um, I'm getting a bit tired of Apple's pricing. Particularly now, as I think since Steve, my opinion, since Steve Jobs has gone, they haven't quite got the edge that they used to, software-wise. But anyway, I'm still fairly loyal to the cause. Uh, I don't particularly like using PCs, and I've had a history of using Macs, and I prefer them. Okay, so I hope I've got enough space on my camera card here to get through this. So I've just got a bit of a funny angle here, but I just want to show you what I've got on my desk here. Um, so here's the NUC here. You can see um, it's sort of Mac Mini kind of size there. Um, it's got two USB ports on the front, one of which is powered. Um, I've got this connected to a topping um, um, audio box thing, um, which is also run on USB. Uh, and you can see here I've got a, a keyboard and mouse um, and a monitor. So what we'll do is we'll just start up and see how we go. Excuse the wobbliness. Um, so here we go. So start counting. Get your top stopwatches going. Like I said, I think I counted this to be about 50 seconds or so from where to go um, so here we go it's come on here's the NUC this is the clover bit it's set up to automatic boot um, and so here we go it'll start looking like a normal Mac shortly and then we'll get the little progress bar now sometimes it goes glitchy here which gives you a bit of a heart attack the first couple of times but I've read that this is quite normal just something to do with the graphics card um, it looks like we're going to have a happy start here There we go, there's that funny glitch. But um, I've read no problems here, it's just an artifact. And there we go, here we go, and we're launching into Spotify. Which is, as you can see, we're straight in there. Things are fairly happy. Um, and it's launched my NAS drive, which I've got connected as a um, uh, shared drive for the family there. So, and now what, if I can zoom in up the top corner here, you will see I don't know if you can see that there, I'm going to zoom in. Um, <clears throat> we've got the Bluetooth here is, is greyed out uh, and so is the wireless card. That's that's not working. That's uh, kind of one of the downsides as I mentioned. Um, and just to give it a bit of flavour, let's, uh, let's, um, let's open up Safari, just get that going. I hope there's nothing embarrassing on my homepage here. There we go, so let's just open that quickly. Um, so we'll launch into a, a web page. I mean, it also depends on my um, internet connection, but you see there, that's pretty pretty quick. Let's try uh, something like Word. And uh, there we go, so Word's opened up there. Into a document. Um, so the pros and cons. So for me, um, the good sides are that the machine is cheap and customizable. So you can choose a spec that you'd need for what you want. Um, I don't think I could do gaming on this, but I'm not into that. Um, but for the general use that I, I, I do, an occasional bit of music and video uh, work, um, other than that, it's a, an office machine, really. Um, it's customizable, so I could have put more RAM in, less. I could have put in bigger hard drives, all that sort of thing. One thing I like is it's upgradable. Um, so I don't like the sort of built-in obsolescence of, of technology that you know, you buy something, particularly the way Macs are going with soldered RAM um, and 
getting more and more difficult to take apart and do your own work on them, particularly the iMacs and, and the um, MacBooks. Um, you're kind of stuck with what you've got and then you've got a you know three or four years potentially buy a new machine um, so so long as the um, operating system works you know any future upgrades to say Sierra or what the next one is work okay on the NUC I'm a happy boy uh, it's also very tidy so I've been able to get rid of some desktop clutter with uh, one drive you no know, two drives inside the machine I haven't have to run an external drive um, so those are the uh, main pros um, the cons are, I guess you need a bit of courage to give the hacking tosh a go. Um, I'm fairly happy messing about with Macs. And I, when I first got them in the 90s, you had to do a lot of fiddling around with the system level tweaks um, and troubleshooting to get them to work. So um, now with OS X, which has been a lot more than 10 years old now, isn't it? Um, very rarely you have to do any fiddling in the operating system. It's just setting up your preferences of how you like to work. Um, and generally stuff works. So like I say, a bit of courage to to get into using Clover and Unibeast and Multibeast, but it's as simple as following instructions, um, and it worked for me, so I'm pretty happy. Technically, of course, um, there's some legality issues around Hackintosh. Um, you're breaking the terms of the license by installing it on a non-Apple machine. Um, I, my hunch is that Apple isn't gonna be going chasing anybody legally because of the cons, which are coming. The cons are, even though the um, uh, NUC has got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and a camera card reader, none of those are working um, with the current um, hack. So um, I understand that some of the, um, the Hackintosh users are trying to develop a Wi-Fi um, fix, um, but the Wi-Fi doesn't work. So you're stuck with Ethernet. Now I'm happy with that. I plug into the Ethernet and I prefer that for this machine so that that hasn't been a problem for me. Uh, Bluetooth is a bit of frustration that that isn't working. It, um, you can see it working but you can't actually um, pair with any devices. I have read that you can, uh, if you had a dual boot machine with Windows on it, you can get the Bluetooth working through the Windows side and then go back into your Mac side and it's working but I haven't done that. It's a bit of a drag. I, I had a trackpad and um, a wireless keyboard which was quite tidy, um, and I was used to doing the swipe gestures on the trackpad. So that's a bit frustrating, having to go back to a two-button mouse and, and so on, and you lose a couple of ports um, for your um, keyboard and, and mouse. But, you know, in the scheme of things, I'm, I'm not too bad at that. Um, compared to the iMac, of course, there's no webcam um, or speakers, and I found that. Um, I used to listen to the to music just through the speakers occasionally, just in the background, and I, I'm missing that a bit. Um, but again, it's not a deal breaker um, and no webcam. I guess I could just go and get a USB webcam and, and plug it in. Um, so I'm not able to use this for Skype at the moment, which is um, you know, a bit of a downside. The only other thing I've found so far, and I've had it installed for a couple of weeks now, is that Photoshop doesn't work. Um, Photoshop crashes, which is a bit of a shame because that was one of the reasons I wanted a more powerful Mac was to um, do some photo editing and so on in Photoshop. Um, so that's a, that's a disappointment. So, so far, everything seems to work. I haven't tried every single piece of software. I haven't tried Reason, for example, um, a music um, making program, which I use occasionally. Uh, but GarageBand worked fine. Um, and I've basically just opened every application I've got and all the Apple ones are fine and all the third party ones I've got are, are fine too. So overall, I'm very happy. I do have a MacBook as well, um, which um, gives me some backup, some confidence that if I want to use Photoshop or something craps out, I can use it. Um, I can do my Skyping, all those sorts of things. So I have got a second machine. Um, if I didn't have one, hmm, good question. Would I would I stick with a Hackintosh? I think for what I use it for, which is like I say, emailing, um, going on the internet, Word, Excel, all that sort of thing, um, I'm very happy. Um,